loads of people have been having problems with their Behringer BCF, BCR getting it to work with uh, Cubase or whatever application you use there are a couple of things that I have problems with but mostly it works really well um, probably worth noting that I use the generic Windows driver I don't use the Behringer driver the other thing to mention is that I use mode U1 on the fader and U2 on the rotary and the way you get in there is simply edit store takes you into edit global mode and then I think the its fades knob this knob number one actually allows you to edit which mode that is the other thing you might need to edit is the u uh, is the unit ID which I think is knob five here there it is there this one's set to ID one also worth noting that in my setup I've got my keyboard connected to the rotary one this one here and both units are connected to the computer via USB so we're using the Windows MIDI it automatically recognizes it on the computer um, as far as configuring in Cubase I've got Cubase 4 set up here and device setup I better read the screen because it is not that clear it shows them up as uh, they're all called USB audio device and the fader what's the fader one? the fader is ID 1 so that's audio device 1 and the rotary is audio device 2 there's also a second line of inputs and outputs they're called audio device 2 which is the MIDI input and output which I've got assigned on the on the rotary one uh, of which the MIDI input takes the keyboard and I've renamed that V50 on the screen there as far as identifying which one of the USB audio devices 2 is uh, is the controller and the MIDI input I just worked it out from trial and error it, you can't stuff it up you just try one and if that doesn't work try the other one I renamed these after I worked out what they were so we've got BC rotary, BC fader V50 is the external MIDI input on the on the rotary unit this one here is not used that's the uh, the output connection which is set up in mode U2 on the rotary one so renaming them means they come up fairly easily over here I can select which one it is for this one here so this is generic remote number one which I've which is the fader one and I use this mainly for volume control and transport start stop etc sign MIDI input to BC fader all I've done is used patch one on the unit they're actually pretty, I think they're set up as uh, number seven which is volume and all I do is change the channel that's right they've always got different channels sending channel numbers um, ah this one here was the one that's set up in ascending order I think all we've got is uh, control change numbers in ascending order on channel one yeah which I think is a preset I think that's how it's actually set up so nothing required there what else should I mention receive transmit flags is the only thing there which is in this section here what do you call this bit here this is the actual uh, controller setup and this is the device setup the one that it's connected to currently set up here for the monolog in Cubase so if I go to generic remote 2 this is for the rotary one um, yeah I can confirm that what I did there was for patch 1 on the rotary controller we've just got MIDI channel 1 for every controller and then control address numbers from 1 ascending to 108 I think I had to do that manually that was a bit of a pain in the ass um, but once done I only do it once of course I was able to copy it through all the different setups that I wanted to use and what's his BC rotary so I've also got set up a wave station legacy cell 2 
So we've got some controllers there. If it all works, you should be able to set up one patch on each of the two units uh, going to the same thing and actually notice that you can move a control and that's duplicated on the other unit there. What else have we got? Optif. That's pretty cool. Rate. Anyway, that all works fine. Um, and of course you should also be able to move it on the screen. That's what we're doing here, we're just sort of moving the mouse around. Um, cut off and we've got cut off fader moving. I'm not sure if you can also see the little LEDs moving on the rotary. That's working fine as well. Um, and the only other thing that, you, that I suggest you do is don't use all MIDI inputs here. Don't use that. Actually work out which input it is and use that input. The difference is because we're using control change number seven, which is volume on the fader unit here, if you use all MIDI inputs, what's going to happen is the volume control um, will change on whatever unit you're actually patched to because that's going to be control change, change number seven, continuous control of seven, I should say. And um, that's going to be a pain in the ass. It took me a little while to work out why that was doing that when I had everything patched and mapped correctly but now it works fine so that's all you have to do that took me a little while to work out but now that it's sorted uh, it works really well as far as why I don't, I don't use the Behringer driver on the computer number one I don't use the Mackie mode so I don't really need it to uh, map around the, the uh, to map around Cubase the way some people like it I'm just using it for basic transport duties and for synthesizer control but the one thing I found about the Behringer driver is it can be a bit of a CPU hog and cause occasional glitches and dropouts and also it, it, it appeared to be the reason why Cubase would hang when I would try and shut down on occasions um, so once I got rid of that uh, Behringer driver everything was fine just one thing I forgot to mention is when you set up your transport, I've got uh, I've got these four buttons here set up for transport: left locator, which is also one, record, stop and play. I've got a couple of things up here such as metronome, return to zero, and what's that? So uh, left bar. With these four switches here, there's actually uh, the little um, I don't know what they're called. They're called uh, flags or something. And this set of flags was given to me by someone on the internet. Really excellent. I'm going to try and get that in focus there. This, is a, this camera's a little bit dodgy. You can see there, one, left locate, you use N. Record, you use T and N. Stop, you use P and N. And play, you use N. If you set up the flags like that, it will work perfectly. And, and uh, what I found when I started doing it, was I had all sorts of problems with um, with switches doing funny things. Um, sometimes you'd have to hit a switch twice. Sometimes it would th there'd be a delay of a second. <laughs> anyway, so throw those flags in there, and the the transport works really well. So specifically, I thought I'd try and get this this screenshot. I don't know this uh, this camera. It's a little bit dodgy. Um, you can see here, yeah, if the camera's not very good, but what I've got set up there is I've got the, the transport items, comma, comma, N, comma, T, comma, N. So this way, let's see, locate one, record, stop is P and N, play is just N, return to zero is just N, back bar is N, what's that, you've got a minus, that's called minus one there, and metronome on is just N. Um, really useful. I never would have worked it out in a million years myself. I had to be told which ones they were. So, that's what they look like. Uh, yeah, awesome camera. 
Awesome camera.